Hello, I'm Robin Vincent and welcome to Molten Modular. Today, we're looking at how you can control your modular synthesizer from your door via an AC coupled audio interface. This video is gonna feature Bitwig 2 with its new hardware CV devices, but also alongside that, a bit of Silent Way from Expert Sleepers, which is a, a kind of a more focused plugin which can do the same thing. It's gonna feature my Avid Fast Track Duo here and my lovely modular synth. Now, the easiest way to control your modular synth from your computer, from your door, is to use a MIDI to CV converter. Just get a module, MIDI comes out of your door, into the MIDI to CV converter, CV goes through your system and it's all sweet. But that's not what we're going to do here. We want to generate CV in the door itself and send those control voltages directly to our modular. No MIDI, no quantization or messing around with MIDI channels or jitter or any of those weird digital type things. This is all about getting control voltage out of Bitwig into the modular. Sounds exciting? Well, it is, but it's more difficult than you would think. And the reason for that is that control voltages can be at zero frequency. They can be set voltages. If you're trying to generate a pitch with control voltage, then it just has to be a set voltage. And a set voltage has no frequency, therefore you could consider that to be very low frequency. And audio interfaces, like this one, are not designed to handle extremely low frequencies. In fact, they're designed to filter those out because they would consider them to be noise or interference and not something that you want affecting the audible range of frequencies. Most audio interfaces are designed to handle you know, high frequency sound, audible audio, and so we call those AC coupled. They're designed to taking alternating voltages like so, wave files and all that kind of thing, and to filter out flat interference or DC signals. However, there are some audio interfaces which are DC coupled, which means they do accept flat single voltage signals as well as alternating signals. And I made a whole video all about using a DC coupled audio interface and Bitwig, and that's easy. Go and check that out. The link should be up here somewhere at this time. And if you're really wanting to get into controlling your modular from your door, then a DC coupled audio interface is really the best solution. It's much simpler, it's much easier than all this faffing around with AC that I'm about to show you shortly. However, those sort of audio interfaces are thin on the ground and so I thought it would be interesting to explore how you get control voltage through an AC coupled audio interface. So just to summarize, because these things are quite difficult and there's a lot of confusion out there. A regular AC coupled audio interface lets through audio signals on a range of like 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. That's normal. However, control voltages can be very, very low frequency. Low frequency oscillations. Think about those waves that you use to modulate cutoffs. Those are very low frequency or individual voltages for pitches. Again, very low frequency and a normal audio interface will filter those out. What we'll do, we'll pretend that my audio interface is DC coupled and we'll run some CV through it and I'll show you why that doesn't work. So in Bitwig, just hit plus, we go to hardware, hardware CV out, that's what we want. All it is, is a knob. It generates control voltage. Whatever you put it, that's what it generates. And because of the wonderful modulator section within Bitwig, we can select like an NFO and we can map that to the control voltage knob to create a low frequency oscillator. And then from here, you choose the output you want to use. Now on the fast track here, we're not going to be using any audio. I'm using it purely for control voltage. It's only stereo in and out. So I've got both outputs here wired into patch cables so that we can use them both channels for CV. So I'm going to select output number one here and that is now coming out of this cable, or is it? Well, let's plug it into the scope and have a look. Now you can see here that we do have a signal coming through, but the amplitude is very small. That's because this is being affected by the high pass filter in the fast track. 
because as we know filters are not like a straight line splat and then everything below that doesn't get through and everything in front of it does filters have an angle to it so at some point signals start to get attenuated until it hits zero so if i increase the frequency of the sine wave you'll see the amplitude get bigger then if i bring it down it'll get to a point where it flatlines completely. And that is at about 0.25 hertz. So I am able to get some signals through it, and I could use that to modulate something if I wanted. But if I wanted to use a square wave, that's not going to work. Because it can't handle the single individual values that a square wave generates. Because a square wave generates a zero frequency value, it just generates a series of them. And what this is able to see is the change, the change between positive and negative. It's not able to see the single value that the square wave is suggesting. And so because my audio interface is AC coupled, because it has that filter in there, it means that I can't run control voltage through it. Not on its own, not by itself. So if a regular AC coupled audio interface filters out DC signals, then what's the point of using them? Well, the point is, is because you can. With some clever jiggery pokery, you can get around this limitation. And I'm gonna show you how. So let me see if I can illustrate this for you. What we want is to get a low frequency oscillation, a control voltage, in order to change, say, the cutoff on my filter over here. We wanna get this out of Bitwig through the audio interface and into here. Now the audio interface is gonna filter this out because it's a bastard. Well, no, because it's just being what it is. It's just, just trying to protect your audio from interference. However, we can sneak this waveform through using something called amplitude modulation. Now amplitude modulation uses a high frequency signal that varies in amplitude in order to get this information through the AC coupled audio interface. Does that make sense? Let me show you. An amplitude modulated signal would look something like this. Do you see? Do you see? Hmm. Maybe not. Within this data, within this information, within this signal that's being sent out, you can extract a lower frequency oscillation, like this. Is it starting to become clear now? So our low frequency oscillation is there within this amplitude modulated signal. Now it doesn't have to be a sine wave. It could be a square wave, which would look like this. Then you get your bub, 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 etc. Or it could, of course, be just a single value, in which case this is just like this, and you get out the other end just a single value. It's easy, it's clever, it's amazing. Now, what is difficult is how do you extract that data? How do you extract that slow moving, low frequency oscillation from the amplitude modulated high frequency signal? Well, you do it with something as ordinary as capacitors. What a capacitor does is that it starts to smooth the wave out. So if we have our, our roughly draw, drawn thing here, rather than the signal when it reaches the top going straight back down again, once you introduce a capacitor, which then releases charge, it starts to smooth itself out. So it would come down like that and then go up and then down like that, and then go up, and then down, and up, and down, and up. And as you do that better and smoother, it gradually becomes a constant line. And that constant line follows that changing amplitude. Does that make sense? So in Bitwig, when we send out a control voltage through our AC coupled audio interface, out of the back here comes this high frequency thing going on. And then we need to run that through a capacitor or some device which is going to smooth that back into that low frequency oscillation or into that single control voltage value. Now you can do this with a piece of circuitry. There are uh, schematics out there which will show you how to wire up some capacitors and some diodes and bits and pieces to make 
it work. You can even build cables which have the components built into the end to the to the jack socket because it's very very simple and that will do the job. Expert Sleepers, the company behind my disting here, used to produce something called an ES1, which was a little module that would go into your Eurorack, which did exactly this. It had a couple of inputs and a couple of outputs, and it was essentially on the back a bunch of capacitors which were smoothing the signal out. If you're into building your own stuff, then you can get hold of the circuit diagram from that and build your own. Otherwise, what they've done is they've taken that idea and they've folded it into the disting. It's one of the things the disting can do. It's one of the things that no one really ever talks about that the disting can do. But the disting, Mark III or Mark IV, which I have here, contains within it an ES1 emulation mode. And that's what I'm going to be using in this video in order to demonstrate what's going on. So to further reinforce that we are understanding what's going on, Bitwig is going to create a control voltage. That is then going to be converted into a high frequency amplitude modulated signal which is going to escape from my audio interface. The audio interface is going to be plugged in to the disting 4 which is going to smooth that back into the original control voltage that came from Bitwig and then we can use that to control something. Does that sound overly complicated? Yes it probably is in which case getting a DC coupled audio interface or getting a MIDI to CV converter there are far easier solutions, but that's not me. That's not what I'm doing. What I'm trying to get at in this video is how to use a regular crappy audio interface with the hardware devices in Bitwig to control your modular. That's the task. I know there are easier ways to do this, but this is what, for some reason, I've decided to tackle. Because I have to say that in my research of this, I found so little information about it. I mean, I did contact Bitwig and I've had some really good conversations with them, but actually they're not entirely sure either. This is very much sort of new ground for a lot of people. Expert sleepers know what they're talking about because they've produced a suite of plugins which do all of this and enable you to use an AC coupled audio interface. And they've also been very helpful to me in working all this out. But what you won't find on YouTube is some idiot like me blundering their way through and trying to unpack the mysteries of this sort of thing. So, you know, multimodular is the only place to be for this sort of stuff. So what I'll do, I'll bring you in closer and we'll have a look at those awesome hardware devices in Bitwig and why it sort of works and sort of doesn't. And we'll compare that a little bit with the Expert Sleepers Silent Wave plugin, which appears to do the whole thing much more comprehensively. So anyway, back to the job at hand. How does Bitwig turn its control voltage signal into an amplitude modulated signal. Well, very simply, there's just a button. It's the AC button here. And this button introduces the amplitude modulated signal and allows the control voltage information to escape from the audio interface as an amplitude modulated signal. If we go back to the scope, you'll see what I mean. So if I press the AC button, this is what happens. So you can see that the same signal is now being represented by a high frequency amplitude modulated signal. If I zoom into this, you can see the waveforms within. So how then do I extract that signal, the signal we want? Well, we have to run it through this, the disting 4. Now this is set to algorithm G1, which is the ES1 emulation mode. And what we need to do is take the amplitude modulated signal and plug it into the disting here. Now you can see the output here is flashing away like crazy and this is the result and output that's coming out. Now we can look at that if we plug that into the other side of my scope. If I set my scope to dual like so, plug this in here, You can now see the data that's been extracted from the amplitude modulated signal. The ES1 emulation from the disting 4 has extracted it and has given us this waveform here. Now that's very exciting, but it's not quite right. If you can see that, it's more of a bouncing ball. What's happening is we're getting the top half of the sine wave and then the bottom half of the sine wave is being reflected up to the top again. So that's not quite right. 
Now I couldn't work this out for ages and I still don't fully understand it, but I did find the solution. The solution is to do with the unipolar and bipolar nature of the CV devices in Bitwig. So back in Bitwig, what we find here is a bipolar button. And if we press that, it sorts it all out. So we disable bipolar. And now, as you can see, the sine wave is now occupying only the top half of this here. But if we go back to our display, we can see that that reflection is no longer happening. Instead, what we've got is kind of half a sine wave, but that's purely because of the trim in the ES1 and the settings on my oscilloscope. So if I change this here to sort of magnify out a little bit, and if I adjust the trim on the disting, I get my sine wave. So now if I plug that into the filter, I've now got proper control voltage control over the cutoff. How marvellous is that? And all those changes, of course, are coming from the modulator, the classic LFO, which is affecting the CV out, which is routing through the audio interface into my scope at the top, into the Disting 4, which is in ES1 emulation mode, out of the Disting 4, back into the scope and out of the scope into the filter. Have you got all that? Now, of course, I do have another one. So if I add another CV out. I'm going to send this to output 2. I'm going to add to this a classic LFO modulator, which I'm going to attach to that, like so. I have to put it in AC mode, turn off bipolar, give it a bit of a randomizer like that. Then I'm going to take the physical output of the fast track, plug that into the other channel on the disting, take that output and plug it into the wave input on the wavetable oscillator. So now I've got one device here doing randomization on the wave here while the other one is controlling the filter. So that's Bitwig controlling my modular via an AC coupled audio interface. That's got to be worth something. That's got to be good. That's got to be an awesome thing, I think. Now we can also do the same sort of thing with the Expert Sleeper's Silent Way plugin. So let's give that a go by way of comparison. So let's add Expert Sleeper's LFO. And this is the plugin here, which is far more comprehensive, I think you'll say, than the bigwig one. If we just increase the sign here and down here a square wave just for difference. This is now routing directly out of the audio interface as if it was DC coupled. And so on our scope, we get a little bit of something to see, but not very much. So what we need to do is turn it into an amplitude modulated high frequency signal in order to route it through our AC coupled audio interface correctly. You're getting the hang of this now, yeah? 
In Silent Way, it doesn't have a little AC button like the Bitwig devices do. Instead, it has an entire plugin which takes care of it, which is called the AC Encoder. Here. All you do is simply enable it, and it will then do the same business as the AC button in Bitwig did. So we now have our two signals amplitude modulated going through the scope. So in order to extract this LFO, we need to run it through our capacitors again, through the ES1, which is being modeled within the Disting 4 over here. Now the encoder actually does something very useful here. It's always sending a signal out, even if it's not being modulated, which is something that the Bigwig one doesn't. So what that means is that we can properly calibrate the ES1 mode in the Disting 4 to make sure that we get a proper output. So if I turn off the LFO for a moment, I'm just purely getting an output from the encoder. If I take my two out of the scope here, plug them into my disting, I can then make sure that I'm getting zero by adjusting the trim and waiting for the, the dark space between the blue and the red LEDs. Do you see the blue and the red here? So that's red or negative and positive. If I can set that right between the two, that is now set to give me a correct plus and minus out of the ES1. So if I re-enable my LFO, you can now see the flashing lights here are the output, and it's flashing nicely between blue and red because that's the positive and negative output. If I take that, plug it into my scope, you should be able to see it. So there you are, two very neat outputs. It didn't require any sort of bipolar buttons or any trimming or adjusting in order to make it happen. The way the Silent Way plugins work is just much more together. It really knows what it's doing. And as you can see, the output from the Silent Way plugins is excellent, and I can use that now to modulate whatever I like. <laughs> Right, there's one more thing we want to do, and that's to be able to send notes from Bitwig to the modular in order to play the oscillators, to play stuff, to sequence stuff. Now, Bitwig does this with something called the hardware CV instrument. This one. Which is a weird looking thing. But what it does is sends out a control voltage in response to MIDI. It's your own MIDI to CV conversion unit, if you like. So if you had a DC coupled audio interface, you'd simply select the output for the pitch and output for the gate, and that would then work. Kind of, more or less. With an AC coupled audio interface, of course, I have to go through the ES1. I need to enable AC on here, and then that will be translated through the ES1. It should hopefully give me the pitch information I need to control my oscillator. So let's take the output of the first one, which is pitch, put that in one volt per octave over there. Turn, oh. Turn up my oscillator. I get something about there. Maybe it needs to be trimmed a little bit. Or trimmed a lot. Well, I'm sort of getting something. I mean, you can see the gate turning on and off here. So that part's working. It's the pitch that doesn't seem to be working. But what you need to do is that you need to tune this device to your oscillator. So you need to take an output of your oscillator, feed that back into the audio interface, and then it can tune itself against it. So I want the output of the oscillator 
going back into here, but I also want to hear the oscillator at the same time. So the only way I can work out how to do that is to go through a molt. So I'll take the output, plug it into the top of my molt, bring one part down back into the rosy, and then I want the other part going via an adapter jack into the front of my audio interface. And then you set that input here on the input bit, input one, then you hit the tune button and it should all sort itself out. But it doesn't. We can adjust the trimming again. Try, try to get that to work a bit better. Hit tune. And it's done something, I get a note there. But whatever's going on, it just doesn't seem to do it. I mean, what we're aiming for is a nice sort of straight line diagonal here, like what it started with before it was tuned. And that should give us our map of voltages across our one volt per octave thing that we need to control our oscillator. It's not able to do it. I don't know whether it's not picking up the input or it's to do with the trimming on the ES1. I'm just not sure because this works in DC mode. This works with a DC coupled audio interface. But try as I might, I cannot get this to work in AC mode. There are AC buttons, it's supposed to do it. I have spoken to Bitwig about it and they actually don't really have an answer for this particular bit. So I think perhaps that this side of it with an AC coupled audio interface is not it is not fully formed within Bitwig and maybe it will improve down the line. But what I will do is I'll show you the silent way version of this to show you that it can in fact work. This is the silent way voice controller. It's, uh, you know, complicated and stuff. It's got a lot of things on it, but again, it has this line here and this is what tunes the oscillator and allows it to play. Now the setup of this in Bitwig is quite complicated because of the nature of the audio routing, because what you need to do is have an audio input from audio interface going into this plugin. And this plugin is uh, billed as an instrument plugin, a VST instrument, if you like. And so in Bitwig, it doesn't allow you to route audio into the input of a VST instrument. I mean, why would it? I mean, weirdly in Ableton Live, this is something you can do very, very easily, but you can't do it easily in Bitwig. However, after hours of messing about, I have worked it out, and this is what you need to do. So the output of my oscillator is going through my molt. That's going partly to the output mm. so we can hear it, and the other half is going into the input on the audio interface. You create an audio track in Bitwig and set it to this audio input here. You can see I can monitor it through there, seeing the level coming in. Then you have to set up the uh, silent wave voice controller as a send. So I have a send channel here that I've set up and added to it the voice controller as well as the AC encoder that I'm going to need. So I then go back to my audio track. I need to send all of the signal to the send. And that way I'm sending audio that's coming in monitored through this audio track, being sent out of its send to the send channel. The send channel has the voice controller on it so it can then receive that pitch information. Oh, got it. Then we need to enable our friend, the AC encoder, take the outputs, put it into the ES1, trim it like before, then take the top output, plug that into one volt per octave and take the bottom one, plug that into the gate on the VCA. Now with a little bit of luck, when I hit the calibrate button here, it's all just going to calibrate itself.
like so. And now I can play it, except I can't because this is on a send. And in order to do that, I'm going to have to record enable. And there you are. This is me playing my modular synth from Bitwig via an AC coupled audio interface through an ES1 as modeled on the Disting Mark IV and into my modular system. Piece of cake. So with a bit of luck, I can record a sequence. Obviously what I'd like to do here is add further modulation, but I can't because both my outputs on my audio interface are being used. They're used to doing pitch and to doing gate. However, if I'm not that fussed about the gate, then maybe I can use that second one for a bit of modulation. So one last thing, can we use modulation from my modular synthesizer to modulate something within Bitwig? Well, yes, we can with a similar amount of jiggery pokery. We need to take a control voltage signal, say from my LFO here, convert that into an amplitude modulated signal that can then get into the audio interface and into Bitwig, which then has to reinterpret that back into CV. That sounds like fun. Now to achieve this, we need to have some kind of device in the modular which can do that conversion of CV into an amplitude modulated signal. And there's something which can do that. And it's from Expert Sleepers, of course, and it's called the ES2. Now they don't make the ES2 anymore. Oh no, it's now a mode within the disting. So let's do that. The disting here is set to G2, which is the ES2 algorithm. So we'll take something out of the Batumi here, my LFO, plug that into the input on the disting. Now that starts to flash red and blue, which is going positive and negative, along with the sine wave. Plug that into there. Now the disting is sending an amplitude modulated signal through to the input on the audio interface and into Bitwig. Now Bitwig has to take that and convert it back into a control voltage. How do we do that? Well, we add a modulator called a hardware CV in. There it is, it's there as a little plug. Let's open that up. And then we can select the hardware input from the audio interface, input one. As you can see, there's already something going on. We need to do is make a couple of adjustments. So now we can map this to something in Bitwig like the cutoff frequency. So I can now use the LFO on the Batumi to affect the polysynth in Bitwig. Fair wave. So that's an LFO from Batumi within my modular rack, sending control voltage to the Disting 4 in ES2 emulated mode, which is then generating an amplitude modulated signal, which is coming out of here, squirting in to my audio interface, 
straight into Bitwig, which is reinterpreting that as control voltage in order to modulate the cutoff of the polysynth within Bitwig. That's fairly awesome. So does it all seem a little bit unnecessarily complex? Perhaps, but what we're trying to do here is use the amazing power of a door like Bitwig and sort of employ it into our modular synthesis environment as well. I mean, you often hear about people are oh, only doing it hardware or only doing it on software. I don't know, that, that, that seems to be throwing babies and bath water all over the place. To me, I like the possibility of integration between the two. And at the moment, Bitwig provides a built-in facility to send control voltage out of itself. To be part of a project that you're building in Bitwig, you can send control out to your external modular hardware. That's pretty awesome. Or you can use the silent wave plugins if you're not using Bitwig or if you're using another door or you want the complexity and the, the comprehensiveness of the silent wave plugins, then you could use those as well. And I'm just using a good old fashioned, regular, cheap, AC coupled audio interface. And it's working like a treat for the most part. Certainly for modulation, this makes some kind of sense. The whole note thing, that's a little bit more difficult. And I think for that, the Silent Way plugin does that far better than the built stuff in Bitwig does. I think that's something that they need to continue to develop and maybe it will get better. But at the moment, you know, if this is something that you really want to do, then I think the Silent Way plugin bundle would be a good purchase at any rate. You may find it easier to use the Bitwig devices within Bitwig itself because they're, they're so simple. They're so easy to make things happen in. Whereas the Silent Way ones are full of controls and parameters, but perhaps are that bit more complex. But use them together, mix and match, you know, whatever works for you. I mean, for me, the important thing ultimately is does it pull creativity out of you? Does it enable you to do interesting things with your music? And I think it does. I mean, I've got two things set up through here, two modulators going out, a simple LFO, which I could use in my hardware, but this one I know is going to be saved with my Bitwick project, which might be helpful. But I've also got this step thing going on as well. And I can just throw that in there and it gives me a whole different level of messing about with my gear, which is all we do. We just want to mess about. Something which gives us more messing is great. The caveat to all this with an AC coupled audio interface is that you do have to extract those low frequency control voltages from the audio interface. And that means making up some cables with capacitors on it or making a little board that's got capacitors on it or getting something like the Disting Mark IV, which has that ES1 emulation built in to enable you to do it. The advantage of the Disting, I think, is that it also amplifies the signal because the signal coming out of audio interfaces can be small, can be weak in terms of what a modular system is used to. And so if you are going through a, a passive solution like capacitors, you might then need to go through a VCA in order to bring the amplitude of those signals back up again. But the ES1 and this thing 4 does that for you straight away. On the other hand, it's quite, I suppose, an expensive module to get purely to do something which you could do with a handful of capacitors. But all in all, I, I really hope that Bitwig continue to develop these CV offerings within Bitwig Studio 2 because they are awesome they're fantastically simple they are there they are creative they get you stuck in and integrating the two with the minimum amount of fuss it's just that the hardware instrument thing is not really working with an ac coupled audio interface if you check out my video on the dc coupled audio interface it did work not brilliantly but it did work just like you saw the silent way one did in here so that's enough prattle i think let's uh modulate
Until next time, go make some tunes. <laughs> <laughs>